Okay, so we got a Toyota idle air control valve here. There's your part number. Is that ASIN? Is Toyota's brand? Yeah. <clears throat> this thing's 12 volts. Okay. Uh, it's got an internal uh, internal flap that opens and closes. It's a uh, rotary type flap. Uh, once one port's open, one port's closed, etc. Your computer controls this valve. Uh, typically, all Toyota valves are pretty much the same. Some may have a slide rod plunger, some may have a rotary style, but they generally operate all the same. This one just happened to come off of a Lexus Toyota V6, uh, 3.0 liter. Uh, I think the ones they quit making in 2004. The one MZFEs? Yeah, one MZFE, uh, you know, 200 horsepower V6. Anyway, we took the throttle body off because you have to take the throttle body off to get to it. And we took some some paint and marked all our vacuum lines to match up our vacuum lines. Of course, you can always take a picture or whatever you want. But anyway, that's not the point. The point of the video is that uh, the car was idling. We checked all our vacuum leaks first. We noticed that the car started idling high and staying at a high idle and then at idling erratically after that, periodically. Um, but we only noticed that after we cleaned the throttle body out with, uh, with some carburetor cleaner, uh, with some throttle body, some carbon choke cleaner. So I'm, I'm suspecting that if it goes down on the bottom here of the throttle body, in case you guys have never taken this off because it's too much of a pain in the ass. So I took it off for you. Um, so this actually mounts like this and yeah. you got four Phillips screws at the bottom and uh, remember when you got steel and aluminum it always creates a uh, a bond between the two sort of like a Loctite bond it's really a corrosion between steel and aluminum and that's why most of you guys have a hard time getting these screws out or any screws or bolts where aluminum and steel meet uh, steel screws and aluminum uh, remember a good whack with a with a hammer breaks that seal if you can get to it by taking like a socket extension a ratchet extension I mean putting it on the head of the screw and pop and break that that first seal and get it off anyway that's a little bonus for you it always works on on uh, bolts that are through aluminum it's been working for years uh, I've been using it since I've worked on Honda motorcycles um, a good whack on the, on the head of the bolt or screw or, or uh, whatever oh look we need to clean the back of this I'm glad I took it off um, anyway of course we're having idle up issues more recently surging well now it's surging so that that's an issue we surging at a low off. RPM right it, it was actually doing quite the opposite uh, the car's electrical system's in pretty good shape. We checked that out. We checked the computer out and all that. Of course, in the service manual, they tell you how to own this out and check it and everything. But let me just go through a quick quick way to check this thing, okay? We took it out as is. As you can see, we got an opening there. And this is where your air comes through. This controls your idle. So, not this part, port. I'm sorry, this big port here. These two go to your water jackets. Water goes in, water comes out or vice versa. This is to keep this idle air control valve warm, to keep uh, the intake a little bit warm underneath here, get hot water flows through it. I imagine this is probably for people who live below temperature. Uh, some people block these off. Uh, but also this thing utilizes water temperature to kind of give you sort of a, a proper operation as well so I wouldn't necessarily block these off because you might experience funny idle uh, you know a funny idle after disconnecting these and plugging them but if you're racing them I'd imagine you probably have a different idle air you can get without these and should just hook you along straight but anyway point is how to test this thing is you got positive in the center the center pan is always positive one on the right is open, one on the left is closed, or vice versa, whichever way you want to look at it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You just take to a 12-volt car battery, 
hold hold 12 volts onto the center and then negative on the sides either side remember don't cross them and flip them around or you'll burn up this little uh, uh it's probably a uh solenoid solen sort. yeah mini solenoid valve in here much like a doorbell for a house or a, a solenoid for a relay it's just an electronic switch and that's what it does and so this electronic switch probably rotates a dial in here and and opens and closes this little gap now when I took it off it had this gap already which you can blow through uh, it's to my understanding that when the car starts up when it first starts up this thing is supposed to start up closed and then it's supposed to open up to give you a high idle and then as your idle speed comes down this thing is I mean as the engine warms up this thing is supposed to slowly start to close now that is controlled by the PCM but it the PCM the computer takes the data from different sensors namely the main sensor it takes it from is the coolant temperature sensor or the temperature sending unit whichever term they use today at the auto parts store or any other place you buy it from that is the main source of of, of uh, feeding mechanism to the ECM so it goes temperature sending unit ECM ECM controls this uh, car tells the car idle up idle down okay so that's all based on the on that and then uh, there are other factors and other other uh, uh, things that tell it tell the ECM to control this at different moments uh, this this device here is one of them this this right here is one of them this is a rheostat switch uh, better known as uh, throttle positioning sensor this throttle positioning sensor will tell the car the PCM at what degree the throttle is is at where your foot pedal is at at what degree sends the signal to the PCM ECM the computer and tells the car whether to advance the timing or retard the time and add more fuel, less fuel, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and down the line. Now, these cars aren't much different than, let's say, the 1960s vehicle with just your regular carburetor and uh, points and condenser distributor. Um, they just have a bunch of technical bullshit on them, a bunch of electronic bullshit on them, but mechanically, they're still kind of the same. So it helps to kind of know and, and pay attention to what your granddaddy or your uncle taught, taught you or told you. Because if we ever have a catastrophic failure one day in, in society and you have some scenario like The Walking Dead stupid TV show or some other doomsday TV show where you see people walking on foot. Well, that's exactly what you're going to be doing unless you understand how a lot of this works. Um... There are ways to manipulate and get around computers, uh, but if you're only computer savvy and you're one of those idiots who just constantly want to show off his new scanner device that he paid two grand for, or fifteen hundred, or uh, twenty bucks on from eBay, there's really no point in you know sitting around and wasting your time idolizing that bullshit because in the end. The shade tree mechanic or the mechanically advanced person who takes the time to, to learn how the mechanics of everything works, the mechanical aspect of it works, you'll have a much better chance of survival, especially on side the road broken down, making a diagnosis without an onboard scanner or a scanner or a handheld scanner or any of that bullshit. But unfortunately, you know. Uh, they want to use claim that you need technology to rely on well you don't always need technology to rely on you know um, and I just want to let people know that that's not the point of this video but I do want to add that in the video because I noticed YouTube and other social media sites are taking down a lot of homegrown videos where they teach you a lot of skills that are going to be lost uh, and a lot of them are being replaced with like videos that don't really teach you shit um, and I don't really care for that um, so you know 
anyway, so idle air control valve. Let's go test this thing. Cut that until we get ready. Let's see if we got continuity. Uh, let's just check it all sparkity spark trick. That's good. We got continuity. 12 volts. Let's see which one's the positive lead. There we go. That's positive lead. Now remember, it's good to do this with gasoline around. Uh, that's a joke, you idiots. Um, <laughs> don't go uh, leaving a comment being a jerk off. Mm. Safety Nazis. All right. So positive. Positive goes to the center pin at all times. This is going to be a bitch because I don't have any alligator clips, but you know, hey, what are we going to do? I mean, you're going to do this in a survival situation on the side of the road? You're going to ask for some alligator clips? No, I think not. So, here. I'm going to connect the pins right here. I have to watch it. I don't cross them in here. I'll do this. You watch that. Now, this is either open or closed. What's it doing? One more time. Looks like it's closing, but not all the way. Oh, that explains our high idle. It looks like it's closed. I mean, it looks like it's just barely closing enough. I mean, like, I'm leaving a very small gap. Wait, it's freaking stuck closed. Hold on. The computer controls the other side, too. So, okay. So, it worked. That side of the solenoid works. The closed portion. So, we're just cleaning the throttle body up here right now. While well, I was making a decision on our idle air control valve. Uh, how to tackle that. It seems like the idle air control valve is working properly. Uh, we just don't know it to what degree it's supposed to close air off fully or or partially because we're not getting a tight seal closed and I don't think we're supposed to. Uh, so we're just we're just cleaning this right in the process but we'll get to our idle air in a second. So cleaning our, our uh, throttle body is pretty important probably in at least these sections once we get some dirt broken loose like this because the idle air control valve looks like a very sensitive device. I mean it could take a grit of sand to, to block up this little trap door right there. It only utilizes that side to suck from and I imagine uh, it does suck from this side, but this is this is the main valve side. If a piece of grit gets stuck in that little flap, uh, I could imagine how it would give a big problem real quick. So we're trying to get what we can out. We gotta use a toothbrush. We gotta use whatever we gotta use. Q-tip, toothbrush, whatever. Carburetor cleaner. Alright, so it looks like we got an idle air control valve pretty clean. As you can see, I can stick my fingernail in there and open it up. And then it kind of hangs three quarters of the way shut. And it's a uh, polished steel and aluminum. So it's a flap. So, now how well that's supposed to seal, I don't know. But we do need to test the strength of the solenoid, so I'm going to clean it up a little bit more and then we'll do that in a second. Cut. Alright, test one. Oh shit. That's why you need alligator clips. Okay. Ready, test one. Alright, that's closed. See that's still got some dirt on it. Not bad, I'll get that off. That's a lot stronger than it was, isn't it? Yes, it is. And if we hold it, like the computer would do, for any length of time, it stays. It stays. Seems strong. Okay, now let's test the other side. Remember, I told you center pen is always positive. Opening. All right, it wasn't doing that before. Nope, it was clogged up before. So, fancy little gizmo says. Tech note, these can't be clean. I guess your fucking little tech machine, two grand machine, is wrong. It's opening up pretty nice there. Guess the actual test would be to put it back on the throttle body. Yeah. Let's try All that. Right, pull it.
this joker back together and we'll see if we can get it to work now I'm just gonna put a thin layer of silicone across this even though our rubber our rubber o-ring gasket is in still in good shape uh, it is from 1994 and we're in 2019 so you know I don't feel like taking this thing off again because we got a little tiny little leak but one of the big things I want to stress is if you do use this stuff try to keep it out of the inside and try not to have too much overlap put it very thin because you do not want this inside this idle air control valve flap or you definitely going to get stuck in one position or another I would bet money on that one so we don't want a piece of this shit breaking off later and getting stuck in here so what we're going to do is get extra residue off You know, let's make sure our rubber grommet, our rubber gasket is in place. Because uh, these gaskets you can't find at the auto parts store at all. You can only get them on eBay. These little rubber gaskets. You guys don't believe me? Try to find an idle air control valve gasket. Yeah, won't find it. I've cross referenced number after number after number. You can't get it at the auto parts store. They'll sell you the idle air control valve for 200 and something bucks, and it's some knockoff Chinese brand. But you will not get this gasket. So, that said, try not to pinch your gasket. Let me see if I smeared this into. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, see, I'm smashing my gasket. Oh, no, I got it down now. Okay, Phillips screws. I'm going to put two of them across. And tighten them in and check the rubber. Cut. I right, put our last screw in. Okay, now we'll tighten our screws in a crisscross formation. Ain't no different than working on a Honda carburetor. When I say a Honda, I mean a motorcycle carburetor. Alright, so we've got that idle air control valve back on. Now, what we're going to do is wipe this clean. I already have carburetor cleaner on it. Give me that new Felpro gasket. Here's the number 61020. Toyota V6. Yeah. That'll work for Lexus and all. That's the one for the one MZFE engine. Um, okay. This is our gasket. It matches up to our old original steel gasket. Well, carbon, a uh, carbon gas. I don't, I don't know what this is, a plastic, but I don't know if I trust that seal. Um, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and glue this on one side, and I won't glue it on the other. That way I can take it back off again and preserve the gasket if necessary. Alright, you can cut. Hmm, pretty dirty. We cleaned it once. I mean, not that good not that bad. What I don't want to do is pollute my oxygen sensor. Where does this go? The EGR valve? Yeah. And I definitely probably want to clean that out. Alright, that's good. Stick that thing on. 
Alright, hang on. Alright. Alright, we cleaned up pretty good. Good mating surface. Alright, notice you note your hole at the top. Two holes down here. Line your line your sucker up. Don't trap any hoses back here. All right. And don't worry about blocking off cooling hoses. That's a bunch of bullshit. Uh, it's not necessary. I mean, it doesn't leak, but about a cut, about an ounce, an ounce of coolant. I mean, if you got a girly driveway that you know you don't want coolant on, or you you live in Cali. California, where the environmental police are going to come and arrest you. So the second you take this sucker off and put it back on, you probably should find a better state to live in or a better place to do this. And I hate to say that, but it's true. I mean, you guys know what kind of communist you have over there. Or Nazis, I should say. Environmentalist Nazis. So I wouldn't worry about the cooling again. I mean, because hardly nothing comes out. I mean, barely a half cup. Uh, just don't put your lines down on the ground. I mean, come on. Use common sense. And if you don't loosen the radiator cap or anything, you're not really going to lose anything as a vacuum holding it in. All right. All right, 12 millimeter hole down. 12 millimeter hole down. So get you a little Kmart 12 millimeter. I'm just joking. Uh, it is 12 millimeter. Get it snug. And like I said, like I always do, you don't have to. I don't care. But go ahead and crisscross. Okay, that's about right for me. That's about right for me. That's about right for me. And we got that. Start, 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 start. If you need a torque wrench for this, no offense, you're gay. <laughs> yep. Alright, done. You can put the boot and all yeah, that we'll back on. Yeah, we'll together and then we'll start the video when we start the vehicle. Alright, throttle cable assembly. The first thing you want to do with this big apparatus, this octopus, is take the spring and hook it on. It goes like that. Got it? Good. Then you want to take this here, cruise control, and hook it up here at the bottom. Stick it in the, the little gap there and pull it around like a bicycle cable. You know, like a 10 speed. Then go ahead and do that there and put that big cable on there. And then uh, go ahead and line up your bolts there. That should work out. And uh, be careful with this because uh, you drop the fucking bolts every time. Let's see if we can get that lined up there. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Give it a shot. See what we got. Everything hooked back up. Let's let the car warm up first. Look at a temp. I mean, look at a. Uh cold out. I mean, it's not cold outside at all, but the, this is the first time the engine started all day. So it's at one and a half. Fifteen hundred. Starting to drop. All accessories are off, except for the radio. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, I know. The radio ain't a big draw. Alright, I'm going to cut the video. We'll... we'll resume in about ten minutes. It hasn't been ten minutes yet. It's only been two. Or about a minute and a half. But, we wanted to note that there's already a difference. 
the vehicle used to start up at 1100 RPMs, no matter what the temperature was. All right, so we're idling about a thousand. Turn the AC off. Okay, with the AC off, we're jumping only about 50 points. Uh, 1,050. Factory tack. Factory tack is always off by about 50. But uh, we want to try to get it down to 700. Uh, even though 700 is a little low for this car, personally. I think 700 for this car is a little bit low, but you want to keep it keep it around factory. You probably don't want anything more than 900 because of your automatic transmission. Uh, you don't want to burn up the torque converter at red lights, uh, having it try to pull against its will with your foot on the brake. So let's put it in reverse. It drops down to about nine, and you can feel kind of a slight rumble feeling. That's because it's trying to pull. Back to a thousand. AC on. It's good. So here's what I'm thinking. Watching the temperature gauge and having just getting this car for fun to go through it from the 250,000 miles on it or 240,000 miles. Here's what I'm thinking. Uh, we've went through just about everything on the engine itself. Everything. I mean, valve covers you. You know everything gaskets cam i mean uh, crank uh seal crank seals uh we've inspected everything time and belt everything you name it we've done it you'll find a video possibly um we even went through the transmission a little bit um pulled the valve body and all but here's what i think is going on when i turn the heater on we've been running for about 10 minutes now maybe a little more maybe 12 minutes and the the heater, this is a good indicator, the heater in the beginning is not as hot as I think it should be. I think it should come out of the vents and melt your face off, but it doesn't quite heat that hot. And we checked all the car for vacuum leaks. We checked the heater, the heater hoses. We checked the, the valve that opens to the heater when you switch manually, when you switch it over to heat. It pulls a lever and controls that. We've checked that. That's all operating properly, so it's letting water flow through the heater core. What we think, what I suspect, is that it's taken so long to idle down to a to a uh, to a 700 RPM range. I, I think we have a new Toyota sensors and stuff for for the uh, um, engine temp sensors. Those are new. The one for the fan on this side and the one for the for the um, the ECM or the PCM or for the computer. So with all that new, no vacuum leaks and a clean throttle body, we should have this car idling at 700 RPMs. We've had it idling at 7 before. What I think is the thermostat in this car is probably stuck in an open position allowing the water to constantly circulate through the radiator, taking a very long time to heat up to operating temperature. Um, and a 180 is the appropriate thermostat for this car. We bought one, we just have not changed it yet because it's down below. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Well, now, now we're getting down to 700. No AC turned on. No, and we are because this temperature gauge shot up to operating temperature. That's where it runs. That's where it's always run on this car. Every car is going to be slightly different, but this car has always ran at that temperature for the temperature gauge. And so now finally engaged the control valve. Right. So what I think is the thermostat is stuck in an open position or it's delayed in opening. Um, and I think what's that, what that's doing is or not delayed in opening, uh, it's taking too long to, uh, to, to, uh, I'm sorry, it's stuck in the, in the open position because it's allowing water to constantly be cooled and, and not stopping the cycle of water to go through the radiator, cool it, and then come back and then cycle again and giving you max heat to the heater. So that's what I think is happening. I think the, the thermostat is probably stuck partially open um, and, and it probably opens up all the way when it gets hot 
but it's still stuck in a half partial position probably because this car should warm up a hell of a lot faster than that it's 90 degrees outside here in the south right now i mean that's what my outside thermostat says 90 95. i can try to turn the ac on see what happens to the revs well it's supposed to shoot up it yep. does it is. it's not supposed to shoot up more than 100 rpms i think it's supposed to go up to nine per the service manual Right, but then come back down. Yeah, I can turn right now. Right, the idle air control valve brings it back down. It sends a signal to the ECM and brings it back down. Good strong engine. Hey, look, we fixed the idle air control valve. Right. So much for that fancy tech shit. Shade tree.